Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Deep Prep, but this isn't an episode of Deep Prep at all. Uh, what I'm about to show you guys is a full-length pilot for a cooking show that we've been working on for the last couple months. It's one of the reasons why we haven't been posting so many episodes. In this new show, we're focusing on local food, uh, eating close to where you are, and supporting the community of food makers around you. So take a look at our new show. Give us some feedback in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Today we're down in the Snoqualmie River Valley. We're gonna be checking out Local Roots Farm. Now these guys have been selling to Seattle restaurants and farmers markets for a couple years. Their husband and wife team, Jason and Siri Salvo, they've invited me to come and check out their operation. So I'll get some stuff to bring back to the kitchen and show you how to make something delicious. Let's go check it out. That man there, well he's Jesse Smith. He was raised to understand that when it comes to food, the closer, the better. Wait, wait, wait. Can we stop the tape? Since this is our first episode, I figure I should do some proper introductions. Intro. Marker. This guy's Mike. He's our director of photography. He's definitely one of those Hollywood types, which we kind of need because we are making a TV show. Next up, we've got the audio department. This is Uncle T-Bone, also known as Tim. He doesn't say much, and that's probably a good thing because he is the sound guy. And then there's Glenn. He does all the post-production work for us. When he's not cutting video, he's, well, that's all the guy does. YOLO. And finally, this is Paul Einhorn. He's kind of the Australian version of David Attenborough. I'm still really not sure how we tricked him into doing this show. Right, key in, Jesse Smith. A chef, a farmer, a teacher, and a father. Spanning the nation, finding the people that grow, cook, and serve the food closest to them. This is Farm to Table. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. And action. Jason, what's up, man? What's up? How we, are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. good. Hold on, you guys get towards one another. Yeah, Just yeah. get normal. I think we were normal. <laughs> So what are you guys growing right now? Well, we have a lot of brassica family things. Brassica is the family that is a lot of vegetables that we eat. It's kale, broccoli, cauliflower, collard greens, turnips, green mustard, spicy mustards, tatsoi, mizuna, and other cool stuff that we've transplanted. Um, from a different farm? Out there too, from a different farm. No, we- Transplanted? I said before, Jesse had been a farmer, a pig farmer, and knew next to nothing about growing a gum. What kind of pigs are those? <laughs> So about half the stuff that we grow, we take the seeds and we put them straight into the ground. Uh -huh. And the other half of the stuff, we start the seeds in a greenhouse and it gives them a jump start on uh, all the weeds and all the other stuff that we're trying to uh, right. deal with. So we're gonna go pick some mustard greens. Yeah. So these are these lovely uh, frilly mustard greens that we are sending to Lark this week. Try it. I can imagine this just being in a salad, like nothing done to it. Are they a different variety than I'm used to? It's a full week between harvest and when it is going to hit the grocery store shelf. Mm -hmm. And like, if it's a tender green, it just, it doesn't hold up that well. And so it. when they're breeding for a mustard variety or a lettuce that's going to go in salad mix, that's going to go in the grocery store, they're looking for something that just has a really long shelf life. And anytime you're selecting for one trait, you're breeding out things like flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're choosing varieties that are not bred for shelf life. Right. And, so uh, you're breeding for flavor. We're not breeding. You mean these mustard greens don't get together and have like a... Hi. Oh my God. Siri. Jesse, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the farm. Yeah, thanks for having me out here. No. Have to... <laughs> One more time. <laughs> wasn't made for television. Yes, you were. Uh, Jesse, this is my wife, Siri. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. And uh, this is where we farm. I'm quite sure we've already established that, Jason, but thanks anyway. So you guys do a CSA here, what is that? About a third of what we sell goes to our CSA program, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Okay. Um, so we have about 200 households that get between seven and 10 freshly harvested produce items a week in their box. You know, it's basically a subscription program. I want to go over and uh, take a look at the greenhouses. Oh, oh yeah, really. the greenhouses are awesome. Yes. Yeah. Marker, greenhouse sago, take one. Wow, these are gorgeous. What? Okay, so what are we growing here? Some of them have the worst names I've ever seen, like Kiribati and Starhawk. And, and over here we've got, what, what is this, pomegranate crunch? Pomegranate crunch. And Apparently this is a romaine lettuce that's red. 
So these names don't have anything to do with their flavor? No, if you're a seed breeder and you come up with a new variety, you can name it whatever you want. And I guess somebody thinks it's funny to name lettuce Dragoon. I'm not sure there's another farm in the country that grows it. Now, of course, word is out. Breaking news. Upon airing this broadcast, Local Roots Farm has since lost their monopolization of Dragoon. So these are all the greens that we uh, harvested for Jonathan earlier today, and we put them into water to cool them off and to clean them, and we put them in these bags, and we, we're just gonna spin them around to get all the water off. Here, go for it. All right. So just spin it around? Spin it around, and when you stop seeing uh, the water fly off of it, you can stop. You can stop. That looks pretty good, yeah? Yeah. That's a pretty uh, ingenious way of cleaning lettuce. <laughs> you can stop. And then we're just gonna gently put it in the box. I could probably just dump it in, yeah? Right, because when someone says to gently put something in, what they really mean is just dump it in. A little plastic bag on top to keep the moisture in. And the last step, put a little label on it. So uh, after this, we're going to be going over to Lark. Uh, it sounds like you guys have kind of a we do funny have a funny story, story about, about Lark. Yeah. Lark was one of the first uh, restaurants that was really doing that farm-to-table stuff, and uh, when I, we got engaged, and uh, that's where we went out to dinner that night. Nice. And uh, drank a lot of champagne and wine. Yeah. Do you guys remember what you ate that night? I don't. I don't. <laughs> and the funny story was. Right now we're at Lark over here in Capitol Hill, and this is Jonathan Sundstrom's place, one of my favorite restaurants in the city. This guy is a culinary god, James Beard Award winner, and serves up some of the best food I've ever eaten in Seattle. So let's go check it out. Hello. Hey, John, I'm, I'm here for the show. Is anybody in there? Hey, uh, delivery isn't back. Oh, yeah, I'm actually here to shoot the sh Oh, you're the Jesse. Come on in. All right, John, so what are we going to be cooking? We're going to do a rapini dish okay. uh, with a uh, warm anchovy dressing All called right. uh, bagna cauda. It means hot bath in Italian. Hot bath. You're the one. Get out! I'm going to go ahead and uh, chop up a few anchovies. This is where you really want to use a good quality, just oil-packed, salty anchovy. I don't rinse them or anything. If you notice the garlic, it's got this green germ inside. It's, yeah. it's basically the new garlic plant. Okay. Uh, that could be a little extra bitter. So okay. just take your knife and um, pop it right out like that. Well, I already didn't do any of that. I already well, messed it up. Let me grab a, grab a little pot. I'm going to go ahead and put the anchovies in. You can throw all the garlic you have done. And we don't need to start with a hot pan or anything? We don't. No, you just let this simmer. It takes about a cup of olive oil. We sort of have different grades for different uses. I would call this a good quality extra virgin, but it's probably 30 bucks a can. So it's not bargain, but it's not top shelf. Absolutely. Yeah, Got exactly. It. This is a little Controne pepper, which is like a Tuscan hot pepper. You want to try it? Yeah. Don't burn yourself. Oh, it's got a kick. It's got a kick. But it's also very fragrant. I like to add the milk to it because I think it gives us just a little bit better depth of flavor. Grind a little bit of fresh black pepper into this. Okay. So we basically do the, the more ancient version of banya cauda where we add milk to it. And the milk gives it a really great depth of flavor. When um, Jesse just a had been bit tasked richer, with grinding the pepper, here, Jesse was daydreaming about what Jonathan Sundstrom would look like doing the cabbage patch. Good, Jesse. We, we got enough. Thanks. Oh, okay. That's good. So we're just going to put this on the stove, Jesse, to uh, let it simmer for a little while. I like to let it cook for at least about 30 minutes to an hour. You could do this a couple days ahead and just warm it back up when you're ready to serve it. Uh, you could do it that same day. So is there like a way that I can burn this? Uh, if you had it really boiling for a long time because there's garlic and the anchovies in there and you didn't stir it, you could burn it. So I'd just say bring it up to a little simmer, turn it way down real low, just let it get let cool. It go couple of good hits of salt in there. You kind of want your boiling water for blanching vegetables to be like seawater almost. Okay. We're just going to put them in there for maybe a minute. That'll sort of take a little bit of the edge off in terms of um, how crunchy they are. And then we're going to dunk them into cold ice water. Just and that's called shocking. Cooking, right? So, 
Cool. And that'll stop the cooking. Yeah. What is this tool? The question is not, what is this tool, but rather, who? <sighs> Images. Okay, Jesse, we've got our Blanche Strapini. We're gonna warm this up and get some eggs poaching, and then it's almost time to eat. So we're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. And we don't have to season this because we already did in the yeah, magic water. Yeah, it's pretty much ready to go with all that, that salt and water. So I've got this, uh, Hot water, simmering gently, a couple tablespoons of white vinegar. So you want to use like a pretty mild vinegar, like nothing uh, like cheap apple Cheap vinegar cider. is the key. Cheap. Yeah. You know, we just use cheap. straight white wine vinegar or even distilled white vinegar because really what you want is the acid. It's not like you're giving it any flavor. So one of the tricks to, to a good poached egg is you swirl the water right before you put the egg in. Why do you do that? You know, because it's just the whites, you know, there's not really much holding it together. By making a little vortex, it kind of brings the egg all into a tight ball. I'm gonna pre-crack the egg, just so it's... Whoa. We're gonna need a bigger cup. We're gonna crack uh, our egg into a little side dish here. That just helps us get into the water. So, let's do this together. You do the swirl, All right. and I will gently put the egg in. Oh, look at that technique. Look at that spoon swirling. All right, all right you got it. You see how the, oh, the egg nice. stays right in the center? So that's just gonna take probably Two minutes. We should probably taste our bandicada. It's a little murky. It's not beautiful, but it is delicious. Well, that's the important part, right? Absolutely. Wow, that's got huge flavor. So few ingredients. That's impressive. So they want this egg to be, you know, medium rare when it goes on there, so that when we cut into it, that the yolk will still ooze. Okay. Ooze. We want that, that is there nice a secret to that ooze? Uh, just. I just go by okay. how tight it looks. I'll kind of pick off some of this extra white, spoon it over. You want a good amount onto the rapini. We've just got a little bit of Italian parsley. You know, because of the, the saltiness of the anchovy, the saltiness of the rapini, we don't need to add any of the salt to this. You know, usually if I cook an egg, I'm gonna hit it with some, some salt and a little fresh black pepper, but yeah. that's pretty much all in there, so. Let's break this guy open. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That looks gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, 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 mm. oh. Mike, you're freaking me out. Mm. Solid. That's really good, man. Mm. Yeah. It's just so fresh, Perfect. but it's also got so much savory going on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the very, egg and the banyakara. It's rich, but it's also very simple. Mm. It's delicious. I had so much fun cooking with Jonathan at Lark. Now we're heading over to my place to cook some dinner with the veggies that I got from Local Roots. Kitchen Sego Margaret. Jason and Siri were so awesome. They gave me a bunch of fresh veggies. You threw out fresh. Okay. Couldn't even understand it. Fresh veggies that we're gonna make a family will. So we've got all our veggies from Local Roots Farm. And the first thing we've got is these beautiful French breakfast radishes. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why they're called French breakfast radishes, except traditionally one of the ways that they're eaten is raw with butter. I guess in France, maybe they do it for breakfast. And we're gonna roast these along with these beautiful little carrots. Now these are pretty small, packing a lot of flavor. Also, this kale rapini. Rapini means little turnip in Italian. It's a flower that looks an awful lot like broccoli. You uh -huh. might recognize it as that. And then also, we're gonna make a little puree out of these celery root. We're gonna peel these up and boil them in some cream and then blend them. And it's gonna be a beautiful base for our trout dish. Speaking of trout, I went down to the market and picked up this little guy. And if you look at his eyes, they're not glossed over. They're nice and clear. That means you've got a fresh piece of fish on your hands. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna take these radishes and all we're gonna do is twist off the tops and we're gonna to toss them in the bowl. Now we're gonna peel these carrots and we're gonna cut them into the same size as the radishes so they can roast at the same time. And we're gonna to toss it with some olive oil and a little bit of sea salt. Now we're gonna throw them on a baking sheet, spread them out nice and even, throw these into a 400 degree oven and roast them off for about 15 minutes. Now we're gonna take this celery root and we're just gonna peel it. Just take the tops off like that and slice them into coins. Put them right into the pot. And just for some extra flavor, we're gonna drop in a couple of garlic cloves. So all you wanna do is take your knife, give it a little whack, and the skin pops right off. Kind of, sometimes. Now we're just gonna give these garlic cloves a little rough chop. Now we're gonna take this kale rapini, and all we're gonna do is chop it up. Let's just set these aside for now. And cut. 
<laughs> hey, what's up, bud? Get some heat on the stove here. So all we're gonna do with this celery root is we're gonna pour about a cup and a half of cream in here. And we're gonna boil it down until it's nice and creamy. Then we're gonna bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna turn down the temperature and slowly cook them until they're ready to be pureed. That light is not the kindest. So our celery root and our garlic have been cooking in the cream for about 10 minutes. And we're gonna check on them and make sure that they're nice and tender. Mmm, that's perfect. Now we're gonna take our cream and celery root and garlic and we're gonna put it into the blender and puree it until it's really smooth. And then say nice and creamy as you can see. Looks like our puree is nice and creamy as you can see. Mm. It's a perfect consistency. So now we're gonna take our fish and we're gonna season it with some salt and some freshly cracked pepper on the inside of the cavity. And now in case you don't have a pan that's big enough to fit an entire trout, which I don't, we're gonna cut this in half on the bias and roast those pieces side by side. We'll just cut right through the bones. And now we've got two pieces of fish that are equal in size and they're gonna fit right into our pan. Now we're gonna put our pan on high heat, put a little bit of oil in there and wait for it to get smoking hot. Our oil is nice and hot and let's get a nice sear on this fish too. Now we're gonna flip this fish over. We've got a nice sear on one side. As you can see, that skin's starting to bubble up. Just flip it right over. Got some nice browning there. And now what we're gonna do is pop it right into our 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. The last thing we have to do to get ready to plate this dish up is saute up our kale rapini. And we're gonna do that in a really hot pan and we're gonna do it really quick. So I've got some high heat. I'm gonna put a fair amount of oil in there. Now our oil is nice and hot. Let's give it a swirl around the pan. Let's get our pan evenly coated. And we're gonna throw in the rapini. Season this up with some salt and some fresh cracked pepper and about two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice to give this some brightness. Now let's give this a little taste to make sure our salt's right. That's perfect. So we've pulled our fish out of the oven. Everything's perfectly cooked. This is the martini finale. Go. So we're gonna set down this puree that we've made of the celery root. Just kind of spread that out over the plate. Now we're gonna go in with that kale that we sauteed up. Now we've got our beautiful looking trout. Now our roasted veggies are just gonna go all around the plate. Now we're gonna just drizzle a little bit of olive oil. That's so my favorite part, the tail. Mm. Mm. I can eat this with all these bones. Action. Ready for you. Action. Action. Nah, uh, whatever the hell. What about Monsanto and that whole thing with the future of food where they got, uh, where they were suing all the small yeah, farmers? I, huh? I hate talking about that. It's all good. You don't have to continue. I saw the movie. Ow. <laughs> Bump. This is, uh, this is us. Um, Bump, Timmy. And, uh... All right. Sorry. So, Glenn, in case you were wondering, that last take is just reactions on people's faces that you can intercut. If, if you are Glenn and if you're Mike, Mike, go by yourself. All right. We're going to go check out Local Roots Farm, which is a husband and team operation, Jason and Siri husband Salvo. And team, no. What? No? No go? Husband and wife team. What did I say? Husband and team. Okay, great. I'm not sure I like this pan up from a dirt puddle. And speeds. Hey, guys. Today we're down to... Uh, you want to give me a little clap on this, Jess? No, just once. Second sticks. Okay, this is take one. It's gonna be the best day ever, guys. I'm on you, I've got your number. I don't know that I have a skin peeling anecdote. You know, if you got a really bad sunburn and you gotta peel your skin, yeah, this is just like that. <laughs> nice, Tim. All we're gonna do here is bring this cream up to temp, then we're gonna turn it down and let it slowly cook until it's nice and tender and ready to be blunt. All I'm going to do here is, yeah. all I'm doing here is, what am I? All we're gonna do here is turn, what are we doing here, Tim? Uh, Again? Yeah. Yeah. Losers. 